Hey guys, welcome back to Dee Dee's Mediterranean Kitchen. Today I'm going to be making a Mediterranean meatloaf. This is another recipe in my series of recipes for Mediterranean Americana dishes. Now, remember, you can get this recipe and all of my other recipes at www.ddmed.com. And remember, when you're there, you can sign up for my social network so we can chat daily. Okay, so we're going to start off with the ingredients and I'm going to tell you what you need and how to put it all together. Okay, here we have two tablespoons of freshly chopped basil. I have a fourth cup of freshly chopped flat leaf parsley. The spices we're going to need are a half teaspoon of paprika, half teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon garlic powder, a teaspoon and a half of salt, and a teaspoon and a half of coriander. I have one cup of uh, shredded carrot, one cup of frozen peas, half cup, or I'm sorry, a third cup of breadcrumbs. Any normal breadcrumbs will do. I have one cup of freshly diced onions. I have a half cup of Parmesan cheese. I have some sun-dried tomatoes, an egg, and a pound and a half of ground chicken. We're going to put it all together. We're going to start off by mixing all of the ingredients first before adding the chicken. Start off with our vegetables. We have the onions. I like using frozen peas rather than um, peas in a can just because they're fresher and they don't have any preservatives. I love fresh carrots. And herbs, fresh herbs add a great, great amount of flavor to dishes. So I prefer using those whenever I possibly can. Um, rather than dried herbs. Here's our basil. Basil has wonderful aromatic smells. We have our Parmesan cheese, our breadcrumbs, and our sun-dried tomatoes. Now, I get my uh, sun-dried tomato. I'm going to add about two tablespoons of this. I get my sun-dried tomato already chopped up and ready to go. You can get, um, if it's not available, you can always buy um, the whole sun-dried tomatoes and then just chop them up. We're going to add our spices, make sure we get it all in, and then mix it up before we add our egg and our ground chicken. Now if you can't have chicken, you can use ground beef, you can use ground turkey, you can use any protein that you'd like in this. Add a lot of vegetables, and I, kids love meatloaf because you can get their vegetables in without them even knowing. If you have you know, difficulty with your kids and them eating vegetables, this is the way to do it. So just like that, make sure it's everything's evenly mixed. I wanna add some fresh black, ground black pepper. Just about a quarter to a half teaspoon, depending on how much black pepper you actually like. Give it a little mix. Add the egg, just like that, beat it into the mixture, and then you're going to want to mix the chicken in, but it's best to use your hands so that it's evenly mixed. You don't have any chunks of chicken that aren't flavored or any chunks of vegetables. And the egg helps to bind the mixture. Now, if you can't have egg and you're allergic to egg, you can omit it. It will bind pretty well on its own, but adding the egg does help keep it bound up. So we're gonna add the chicken. If you don't have ground chicken at your grocery store, you can always just get two lean chicken breasts. And um, in the blender or food processor, just blend them up and it serves the same purpose. So here we go. We're going to get our hands dirty and mix it up really well. This is a great dish. It's a great alternative to the regular old meatloaf because I know a lot of people are like, oh, I don't like meatloaf. It's, you know, it just doesn't have good flavors. This is a great, great flavorful dish. Okay, this is mixed pretty well. I'm going to show you how to put it all together now.
Now that we have all of our ingredients mixed up, I'm going to show you how to actually cook the meatloaf. Now, there's a couple of different ways. Some people like to cook meatloaf in a loaf pan because it is called meatloaf. Or you can actually form it into a loaf if you have a, a glass pan or a baking sheet. Any way will work. It serves the same purpose. You just want to make sure it's formed into an actual loaf. So I'm going to first spray it with some non-stick spray. And then I'm going to form it into a loaf. You want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees, so it'll be all ready when you put the meatloaf in. So just like that. You want it about three to four inches wide, and about mm, an inch and a half to two inches thick. Just like that, and make it really nice and pretty. Now, some people like to top their meatloaf with um, tomato sauce. Some people like to top their meatloaf with ketchup. I prefer ketchup just because ketchup is a little bit sweeter, and I like that sweetness and that acidity from the ketchup when you add it to the meatloaf. So just like that. And then we're going to cover it with some aluminum foil. And then we're going to bake it for 20 minutes at 400 degrees. And then we're going to remove the foil and bake it for another 20 minutes so it gets a nice crust on it. And then after the 40 minutes, we're going to top it with some ketchup and let it cook for just a couple of minutes in the oven. And then I'll show you Okay, what it looks like so it's, it's been 40 minutes. And I took the meatloaf out, meatloaf out. And what I'm going to do is top it with some ketchup. And then I'm going to put it under the broiler for about two minutes. Just cover the top. If you again, if you don't like ketchup, you can use um, like a tomato sauce. And if you don't like tomato sauce or, or ketchup, you don't have to even use anything. Some people like to use a gravy with meatloaf. That's always good as well. And you can just serve that on the side. So there we go. We've topped our meatloaf just like that. See how pretty it is. We're going to put it back in the oven under the broiler okay, for another so two minutes. Under the broiler for about two minutes. Now, you want to let your meatloaf sit for five to ten minutes before cutting it. And always use this rule whenever you're cooking any type of meat or protein. Whenever you take it out of the oven or whenever you're done cooking it, let it sit for five to ten minutes before you cut it. What happens if you cut it immediately is all the juices run out and then the meat tends to get dry. So if you let it sit, the juices stay within the meat instead of running out and you end up with the juicier meat product. So we're going to let this sit for 5 to 10 minutes and then I'm going to cut it and show you the wonderful colors inside this meatloaf.